Hello! Uh, in this uh, four-part tutorial, I wanted to tell you and sh to show you how to create this kind of ornament. Uh, in part one, I'm going to talk about modeling in CMF4D. Um, so pretty much how to make it happen from the ground zero. In a part two, I'm going to talk about UVs and um, uh, UVs maybe not the best uh, tool in Cinema 4D, but if you want to do it in Cinema 4D, it's there. And part three, we're going to do texture in Substance Painter. And uh, in part four, I'm going to render it out in Cinema 4D and Arnold using the model, textures, and um, extra uh, bonus is this moss. Um, to create this look. So let's jump into part one. Let's uh, jump right in. Let's change our layout to modeling. And uh, let's take a look at what we're going to model. Um, so I found this image earlier. Uh, this is very common Dec decorative piece. I kind of want to do it in 3D. I maybe want to add, to add to it more volume than it has on this image, but ima that image uh, is the good base from where to start. So in order to model it, let's put it uh, on our um, background. If you if you middle click your mouse, you can go into overview of your four views click on top view and uh, hit alt v alt v um, will bring you into this panel where we can put uh, the image behind so uh, let's uh, put the image behind the top view so we can model according according that uh, let's click on back and drag and drop our image into this button. We also can click on it and uh, go into the structure and pick it there. Um, this is great. Let's dial back transparency of our image so we can model better, so we can see lines better through it. Uh, also, you can adjust the uh, offset of your image if it's not symmetrical. Uh, you can change this position and also you can adjust the size of your image. This is good. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to model this thing. We can model it with many different ways. One of my favorite tools to use is a polygon pen. You can access it here on this panel or you can click shift C and start typing polygon tool. Um, it is awesome tool. It is an awesome tool. It allows you to model things incredibly e easily. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the functions of that tool. I recommend watching this tutorial. Uh, Michael talks about it in all details. Uh, but let's just, I'm just going to talk about some features which I'm going to use. So I selected Polygon Tool and I switched to Edges in that tool. Let's see what Edges do. It pretty much allows you to draw lines like this. You can continue it. But then what's awesome with control, you can connect it and create geometry, which you pretty much just drew. So if you look at this view, those are polygons. It's a very, very easy way to model objects like this. If we look at this object, what I'm going to do, I'm going to model half of this part half of this part and, and 
this side and then I'm going to drop everything into the symmetry so we wouldn't have to do it twice. So let's create the shape of the main petal. Uh, if you hover over edge, you pretty much control in the edge. If you hover over the, over the point, you control in the point. If you hover in over polygon, you control in the polygon. If you hold in control while dragging the edge, you can extend it. So I'm just repeating it many times. You don't want to go too crazy in amount of uh, your polygons because later on we would need to uh, change the shape of it because right now it's flat and we would need to add some dimension to it. If you put too many polygons it will be hard to control it. So keep it uh, keep it as minimal as possible to uh, maintain the, sh the shape. So here I'm just keep extending keep extending the polygons. If you like the other method better with just drawing edges, you can do that too. Again, with control, you can connect those edges. When you get to this part, what you need to do, you need to split up those polygons in two like this, like so. So pretty much repeating this process multiple times. It's very simple really. Again, I'm just holding control and dragging dropping my edges. Okay. I'm happy with this line. Now let's uh, create this left petal. For that we would need to exit our model. So just go to the um, object menu and click on the empty space. And now when you're going to create new polygon, the uh, new polygon edge, and connect those, it will create new polygon. Uh, so we can keep those objects separate. And from here, same deal, we just sort of painting, drawing the sides of our flourish, our ornament, keeping, keeping it light, not going crazy with the amount of polygons so we can control it easily. When you're going to draw inside, make sure you keep amount of dots consistent so your topology is consistent so every edge has its pair. Again, just very simple. If you messed up, you can just hover over dot and uh, move it around. Uh, that's the beauty of Polygon Pen. It gives you a lot of freedom to manipulate polygons and edges in the way you want. Super simple. If you made uh, a mistake, and you want to delete the dot, you can just click Control, and it will melt whatever element you are uh, hovering over. If uh, for some reason it didn't snap correctly, you can just go and snap it 
element by element. Okay, so we made the main point, uh, the, the main shapes. I'm going to do this part later on after I extrude my um, these petals. So yeah, let's jump into extruding things. So if if you middle click again and then middle click into your main screen, you can see the actual result. I usually like to remove the grid because it kind of distracts me. So, removing the grid. And I like seeing the polygons. If you click on N, B, you can see the topology. You can see the actual polygons. So, in order to extrude it, let's go to Edges. And the whole thing is selected. When you double click on it, it means your geometry is looking good. Um, in order to create some shape to this side of the flourish, we can just uh, lift this edge up. One thing I don't like, doesn't particularly matter now, we will fix it, but uh, the way how it looks soft and hard in some places. So in order to fix it, I'm going to go to my phone tag and uh, change my angle to 25. So to me, it's looking better now, but it really doesn't matter because we're going to subdivide it later and um, all those details going to be fixed. Um, you see how those elements here are not looking right. I kind of want uh, the edge go higher in these places and then slowly uh, going into the same level as the bottom edge. So in order to do that, I can just lower those dots. In order not to eyeball it, I can go, uh, I can take a look at this panel this panel pretty much shows the uh, coordinates of every dot and element. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to change it to from object to world. And in that particular case, we see that it's Y. So change Y to zero. So now I know that those two dots lay on exactly the same plane as all those dots because they've been created on Y uh, panel 2. And now I'm going to select those dots, lower it ever so slightly, and, and maybe those dots. So shape is looking good. I like it. Let's drop it into the subdivision surface. So what subdivision surface does, it pretty much divide every polygon on two or eight or six more and more and more and kind of smoothen it. Which is great, by the way, in order to uh, automatically have a uh, right hierarchy i'm holding alt i'm holding alt and clicking on subdivision surface this way my polygon my flourish this side of the flourish automatically being dropped inside of the subdivision surface if you just click on subdivision surface then you need to drag and drop polygon into subdivision surface 
so it's just faster with alt but uh, if you take a look at it it doesn't have an edge and we want a pretty sharp edge here so in order to create so in order to create a sharp edge we will go to edge mode click on the polygon so just for sake of visibility I'm going to turn off my subdivision surface um, I'm going to select the edge I want to be sharp and uh, I'm going to click on MS, the tool called Bevel, and kind of drag the edge in two sides. So this is looking good, but if I want even sharper result, I can add one more subdivision and it will create extra a uh, loop between which makes uh, which will make shape look even sharper so you can adjust it the way you like it I like it this way so if you go to view without any geometry which would be NC you can take a look how it looks great let's go back to our to our polygon look which is as I said NB cool that's looking good let's talk about how we add actual thickness to that part in order to add th thickness what I'm going to do I'm going to extend this part down and then I'll turn on another symmetry which uh, will this object pretty much will going to duplicate itself and we will merge it in the middle so in order to lift it I in order to extend this edge I want the end of the edge uh, be on a Y plane so when I do symmetry I don't have to uh, move my symmetry object so that it will just work by default so that's why I want to lift my detail a little bit from there I'm going to uh, hover over edge of my model on my edge mode and double click it so it will select this loop and then holding shift I double click here holding shift double click here holding shift double click here so you have outline selected if you don't want to go through all the stuff and you if you remember hotkey you can just uh, select uh, you can just do outline selection which will do it well this is happening because I have polygon selected see if I have if I click control so I switched back to my polygon mode. If I do control A, now my outline outlines everything. Anyway, so now going to um, my general look. If I click control and drag my edge, it will create a row of polygons in order to see what's happening let's remove subdivision surface see it's extending one more row of polygons which is great but you see when it does it it kind of creates this very soft shape and I want it to be uh, pretty sharp edged so in order to do that I just need to extrude a little row of polygon polygons and see how much sharper shape looks and if you want even sharper you can extend a little bit more 
so and to me this is looking good if you turn off your subdivision surface you can see that those are three rows of polygons I created so automatically it kind of created extra loops which hold the shape better cool so now I need to make sure that this edge is on zero that it's on ground zero so what we're going to do we're going to take a look at our Y and click zero so now we know that it sits on the floor so uh, later on we will when we're going to add our symmetry which I'm having a hard time to find because I didn't work in R21 much um, we will go to this uh, menu if you just hold your mouse there for some time <laughs> and click on symmetry so now you can drag and drop your polygon into the symmetry and let's pick a different mirror plane so now you can see that automatically because we created this edge on a ground plane and symmetry created on the ground plane um, everything is uh, merged everything merged perfect so now if you uh, drag and drop your symmetry with a polygon inside it into subdivision surface what we get again n b or oh, n b no n c <laughs> n c uh, we see that the shape is looking pretty good so this shape is done let's jump into this shape and let's do the same thing let's um, go to the edge mode double click on the middle so you see how it's not uh, straight and I want it to be perfectly straight in order to do that I'm going into my uh, my scale tool which is you can just click here and holding shift nope start when you just clicking on this one um, axis and holding shift you can get to zero so now you can see that I have absolutely straight line there and in order for symmetry to work later on I would want it to be on zero but actually okay no we'll come back to it later uh, so now let's shape it same deal uh, so I kind of want when, when you have polygons uh, or edges or dots selected when you click control you can deselect them so I'm um, with shift you can add to your selection double click selects the loop so okay so this is approximately our shape let's make this full more gradual Again, uh, when I uh, move stuff around, I'm using either one axis or one plane, so my dots would not move freely into the space, so they all can stay on this zero coordinate. Okay, so after this is done, same deal. Let's first, because it's a symmetrical shape, uh, let's drop it into our symmetry. And it's looking pretty good. And with Alt, holding Alt, let's uh, drop it into subdivision surface. So as you can see, 
as it happened with the previous element, our straight lines disappeared. In order to fix it, we want to add more edges, more loops. So in order to create a sharp line going this way, we uh, want to add extra loop. So to do that, I would just move it on the side a little bit and then holding control, extend it and make sure that it sits on zero. So now it does not. Okay, it didn't sit on zero, probably because it wasn't. Again, let's duplicate. Let's make sure that it's all uh, in one straight line. Click zero. Okay, we can tell before something was wrong because the dots didn't merge, but after I did this, they merged. So everything is looking good this way. And so we have sharp line here. So we need to create sharp lines. Um, we need to create sharp lines in here and here. So in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my uh, move mode and there is instrument called mo called uh, slide and with control i'm going to slide the edge perfect let's do the same here i'm actually going to do my bevel tool which is ms I remembered settings from the last time, so it has an extra extra loop. And now if you take a look on this part here, if I am going to use bevel to create this very ugly spot, which kind of doesn't know what to do with itself, but if I'm going to use slide which is MO with control, it actually created better shape. So I'm just going to do that. And uh, yeah, it m might even do it a couple of times now in this direction. So my edge is a little sharper. Uh, let's see how it looks. Let's turn on subdivisions. Cool. I think I like it. I think it's a little probably too sharp. In order to fix how sharp it is, I I double click. So uh, in order to make it less sharp, I just need to move those loops farther away from each other. So I'm just going to MO, which is slide tool, and uh, move them a little away from each other. So now if we take a look, it looks less uh, sharp. And I personally don't like this particular spot. So if I click spacebar, it will switch, it switches to this element. Actually, it switches to the uh, instrument you've been using before. Uh, so you can just go to this selection, Se uh, select those two, actually select this dot, go to M all slide. Let's turn on subdiv turn off subdivision. Let's make sure that it's close. And same deal here that it just sits close to our edge. So now we can see that our shape is looking better. So now to create 
thickness, we will do the same thing. We will move our object a little higher. And then, uh, let's select the outline. But in this particular case, outline will not work. The, uh, the outline selection will not work because it will select the uh, middle part. And we don't want middle part to be extruded because it will create this whole inner thing, inner uh, wall, which we don't want. So let's just let's just double click on edges, and let's not forget this little part here because edge loop usually does not extend this far. And with control, extend it just a couple times. First time, second time, and third time would be our actual thickness. And let's make sure that it sits on, on the floor. So, looking good. Thickness is there. Again, uh, if you drop it into another symmetry. So we'll put in symmetry inside of the symmetry. And uh, if we uh, pick right plane, you'll see that it actually has dimension. And now you can drag and drop this whole thing into subdivision surface. Cool. This is looking good. Now let's make our middle part. So in order to create our middle part, I want to hide for a second all this geometry. In order to do that, I can click with control on the... I'm holding control and I'm clicking on the top uh, circle till it turns red. And same deal here. So if you hold, click it again, it ap will appear again. So let's just keep it red for now. Um, I'm clicking on the empty space in my uh, polygon, uh, in my object uh, menu, and clicking ME for polygon pen, which we used before, and let's create this band. So let's make sure we have our edges selected in the mod, and let's paint or draw our band. Sweet. So we have the base for that. Let's turn back on our geometry again, holding control. And now I'm switching from point mode to object mode. And uh, clicking E, I'm going to the move tool and lifting this band higher. So this is cool. Let's shape it. I'm going to the edge mod and just and just shape in this detail. So when you go to the move tool, you can see like I want to move this edge straight down, but it does not give me this option. And just because my uh, coordinate system is local to this particular edge. So it's local to element which is selected. If you want it to be just regular X, Y, Z, uh, always standard axis, you can click here or you can click on W. So W switches between local and world system of coordinates. So here, because I'm just moving and moving those edges down, I just want to keep it in the world coordinates. So I do that. And the next thing would be to create 
some thickness to it. So to do so, I'm selecting the loops with control, adding thickness. But see, um, it created this sort of effect. So I can just move it this way. And uh, I'm going to uh, scale mode and picking just this plane. So it does not shrink this way, it shrinks just this way. Cool. So this is looking good. Let's make sure that it will be appropriate for the symmetry later on. So again, I'm going to hide my other two objects. For symmetry, I want this part to be on my X side. So again, I'm going to I'm going to my uh, scale mode and scaling it to zero on my X axis and bringing it to X. This part I want to be zero on Y axis, and we can tell that it's a little too high. So let's just move things accordingly. In order to fix things like this, you can middle click and go into appropriate view. In this particular case, it's this view. Uh, and clicking zero, go into go into uh, square selection and just adjust the points. And um, as we we can do the same thing with uh, proper symmetry, dragging and drop into one symmetry and then dragging and dropping into another symmetry here and changing it into a proper proper mirror plane. That is looking good. I don't like this pinching here, so I'm going to lift this dot a little bit. And um, I want to add some bevel, which is MS. Let's see how it looks after we drop it into subdivision surface. Actually, what I want to do, I don't like the bevel I made right now. I'm going back to my I uh, command Z, couple of steps, going again to my MS bevel mode, and I'm going to remove this subdivision here because I want it to be more sculpture like. I want to those bevels to be uh, sharper. So I did it once. Now I'm selecting every created bevel and doing it again MS, then smaller bevel here. So now if we are uh, dropping it into our subdivision, it looks kind of more sculpture-like. It has this sharper edge. This is looking good. Let's drop this guy into the symmetry too. So here I go. This is our ornament. You can put it into the folder and call it ornament. Also, you see how right now we have those subdivision surfaces in every separate element. You don't really need it. You, It's better to have one subdivision surface um, holding all those elements. So let's for now remove division surfaces and we can put the whole ornament group into this. So now my subdivision surface 
controlling the whole element. And that's how you model the flourish.